So the biggest key I think to crankbait fishing is once you find that right little depth zone, the, the right bait to deflect off the, the certain depth that those fish are at. When you make that perfect cast and you're bouncing off a cover, you want to make that cast more than once. What I'll do is I'll try to make multiple casts to certain areas, maybe a, even there's a, a rock or a stump that's laying off this point and I might make a cast where I deflect off it. Well, if I don't get bit on the first cast, a lot of times I'll make five, six, 10, 12 casts sometimes, especially when it's tough, to that same target. And sometimes with a big fish that's just staging like that, it takes multiple casts to get that fish to react. The one thing about crankbaits that, that's unique from any other bait is that they have an ability to get fish to react when other baits won't. You might throw a jerk bait through those fish, they might not want to come up to it. You might throw a spinner bait through them. You might even fish a jig really slow. A crankbait, you can fish it fast and you can get, especially with smallmouth, you can get those fish to impulsively react to that bait and it catches a lot of fish sometimes when other baits won't. Weird looking Smalley, real skinny. Choke that crankbait, man, right where they should be. He's an old fish. They're starting to move in. Look, he ate that thing good. They're starting to move in on these same things, secondary points. That type of gravel is so important to find that. It's almost kind of easy once you see that type of bank, the right type of area. <clears throat> Long, skinny fish though. Look at that one. Right off that point, 8 to 12 foot. The other thing that's important in clear water when you're cranking and you find that right spot is that you want to make sure in clear water especially that you use speed. I'll often, even in cold water, I'll use speed but the key is when I deflect off a cover, I'm gonna pause that bait. Because with smallmouth, they might be following the bait. You're using speed, they're following the bait, you deflect off the cover. As soon as that bait deflects off the cover, it gives that fish a second to catch up. And a lot of times, that's what triggers those fish. Big brownie. Look how full that fish is too. This time of year, when you find a little area, and, and the whole key is if you look at this point, there's a depth change where that deep water comes right up to the point. Those fish are sitting right on the corner, right where it goes from eight to 12. They'll just slide up on a day like today, especially they'll slide right up on that corner there. I caught one, I backed off it. I saw some on the graph, Backed off it, lined up, made the right cast, and it's a specific angle cast where you want to keep that bait, you want to keep that bait parallel, keep it in the same depth, and make it come across where that little break is. If you do that, you get bit every time. Pretty awesome. Spring cranking is, it's hard to beat, you know, we're fishing a bunch of different ways. It doesn't really seem like they want to come up and chase something. So sometimes you want to bring it right to them. And these fish, I, I really think these fish are eating crawfish. So you want to get a bait that's scooting along the bottom, natural color, clear water, and get them every time. Look at that football, man. That is cool. What a healthy fish. That's what the nice thing about a crankbait is. You can feel when that bait is deflecting off of the bottom. So this bait will go roughly about 10 foot. 10 foot where it comes up to this point is a very small little zone. So I'll make a cast to the left like this and I won't hit it. So I adjust my cast by going an inch or two over till I really dial it in. That's why I like to fish a crankbait because I can really break down what I'm fishing. And you know crankbait fishing is pretty easy. The main thing is finding out what each bait goes to as far as the depth 
and then applying it to what you're fishing. So this bait, and, and a lot of times I'll, when I'm fishing a point like this, I'll have three or four different rods. I'll have a, a rod to go for a bait that, that'll go six, seven foot, seven to nine foot, and then a bait that goes 10, or, 10 to 12. And so I'm covering, I'm piecing it apart until I find that optimum depth for where those fish are hanging at. And it can vary from point to point. But the thing is, when you can dial it in, you can roll up to an area and maximize and, and catch them quick. It's, it's a good deal to get reaction strikes and you can just cover a lot of water. This is, this is a pretty good example of a good area. You got a creek channel that swings all the way around here and then it transitions. You can see the transition is clear as day from that bluff wall to that, that fine gravel that they're on. Now the thing is we're sitting in 18 foot and you get out here it's about 50 foot. There's a nice little shelf for those fish and the wind's blowing right through it. There's a nice little shelf for those fish just to slide up on and feed. And when the water warms up like this and the wind's blowing on it, this is the type of area you want to fish. It's so important to play these fish out. Don't rush them. You see that rod has such a good parabolic bend to it. Keeps that bait from tearing out. That fish hit, and as soon as he hit, he went out to deep water. He was really hot. And without a soft enough rod, you gotta have the backbone, but without a soft enough rod, you might lose that fish. He's hooked pretty good. I'm not gonna rush him. I want those hooks to tear out. There you go. Well, he looked bigger in the water. That clear water is deceptive, but that's still a good fish any day of the week. Look how he ate that too. You can tell fishing these conditions when you got clear water, high skies, natural colors, translucent colors are the ticket. Because in clear water, there's two things you have to do. You have to make, you have to choose a natural presentation, but you have to use speed. I'm fishing this thing pretty fast. Water temperature right here. It's in the mid 50s and these fish man you get it around them and it's, it's just on that's a beautiful dale hollow lake smallmouth look how fat these fish are it's deceptive in a picture when you hold a fish up like this because the body's small but they have the build of a great lakes fish what an incredible fishery this is see ya Look at, he's barely hooked. Look at that. I mean, look at that, don't jump. <clears throat> Big body, small mouth. Look at that sucker. Come here, Mr. Small Mouth. Look at that one same exact spot as that little one so important when you catch one this time of year to pay attention to the cast and also the cast angle because we're fishing a you know right on the lip of an extended point it breaks pretty fast and if you're a few inches off one way or the other they won't hit it you got to be Mike making contact with that gravel too that's a nice big bodied smallmouth right there I'll let her go. See if there's another one on that point. That's the cast right there. Ooh, another one. Another big one. <sighs> I 
There we go. Look at that. Getting better. And they're on one specific cast. It took me about 10 casts to relocate it. It's, very, it's pretty much on the, the very fine line of like, if I cast a little bit too far to left, I'm too shallow. But if I make that perfect cast, I get bit every time. That is a gorgeous smallmouth. Look at that fish. <laughs> oh, I love those brown fish. Biggin. Ooh, big small one. Ooh, big small one. Big dark small one. He's been up here shallow. Oh my goodness, that's a big small one. <laughs> Got him. That's the one we're looking for right there. Look at that one. He came off that little bit of wood. There's a beaver dam right there. And I took that crankbait and I feathered it off the outside edge. That's what we're looking for. Wow, what a fish. I'll tell you what. When the water gets to be about 52 to 58 degrees, right before they spawn, a crankbait is one of the best ways to catch them. Wow, what a fish, man. He ate that thing really good. You know that you have the right color when that bait is inside their mouth. And I'll show you something that's really, really cool while I remove this bait. I noticed this. i let this fish go. i got to show you this, though. Really cool. What a beautiful, look at the stripes on this fish. This is a five pound smallmouth. Look how fat they are, too. I mean, just covers up my hand. We'll let her go quick. Get it back down there. Wow, what a beautiful fish. Those Dale Hollow small ones are awesome. Now check this out. It's all about matching the hatch. Look at the color of that crawfish, how green it is, and the orange. Look at the color of that bait. Such an awesome deal. Match the hatch. There's a certain time in the spring when those fish start gearing on feeding on, on crawfish, and that crankbait is awesome. So try next time you're on the on your body of water, and this happens all over the country, try a crankbait when the water gets over 50 degrees. <laughs>